Hey guys, welcome to this week's FAQ in Freebie Friday. Now before we begin, if you're new to the channel, these videos are all about answering your health related questions. So if you have a question concerning your health, something regarding health in general, diet, nutrition, herbalism, supplements, or really anything related to health and wellness, and you would like our help in answering your questions, all you have to do is leave those questions in the comment section below and we'll be answering those questions based on popularity, the questions that we feel that are going to be the most beneficial to the group as a whole, and of course the questions that we are capable of answering. Now something else really great about these videos is that every week from the comment section, we select one lucky person to win a free bag of tonic herbs or medicinal mushrooms. Now even if you don't have a health question for us this week, but you're interested in winning some free herbs or mushrooms, all you have to do to be entered to win is simply subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, give this video a thumbs up, and then just drop any comment in the comment section below. And with all that being said, let's get to this week's questions. All right, so taking a look at our first question, this question reads, thanks for the Q&A. What about iodine and thyroid in overall health? If supplementing, how much do you take? And if I have autoimmune, Hashimoto's, etc., should I be careful with iodine supplementation? What are your thoughts about it? Thanks. All right, so this is a really good question. I wanna say that I covered something similar to this once before somewhere deep in the archives, but it's been a while since I talked about iodine and thyroid health. And since we're releasing so many videos this month about thyroid health, I figured I'd answer this question because there is a lot of confusion, I think, around the use of iodine and treating thyroid issues, especially if you have Hashimoto's, an autoimmune-driven thyroid condition, as mentioned. So the first thing to understand in regards to supplementing with iodine is that you want to make sure that you have a non-radioactive iodine. So not all iodine supplements are created equally. Some are completely inferior in quality compared to others. And unfortunately, the major sources of iodine usually come from some sort of kelp, some sort of seaweed, which can be radioactive depending on where it's grown and where it's harvested. So I usually recommend not getting seaweeds that come from Japan because of you know, the radiation from Fukushima and instead trying to get your seaweed from the shoreline of let's say Maine where it should be at least a little bit cleaner, or at least less likely to be radioactive or contaminated with radiation. So you can usually find this sort of seaweed in your Whole Foods grocers and things like that. But before you go eating a bunch of seaweed, keep in mind that first and foremost, most seaweeds are comprised of oligosaccharides. So these are complex saccharides or sugars that can be irritating to the digestive tracts of people with hypothyroid because hypothyroidism tends to decrease the rate of digestion, digestive motility, the secretion of digestive fluids and enzymes. So in other words, seaweeds can actually be quite difficult to digest. You have to make sure that you soak them for long periods of time usually, depending on the seaweed. Some like dulse can be eaten raw, but still due to the complex sugars that they're made up out of, if you're somebody with low thyroid, I'm probably gonna recommend that you don't really consume them too much. You might just be better off taking a little stick or a little sheet of kombu and putting it into a bone broth to sort of mineralize or iodinize your broths. So that way, not only are you not consuming the tough fibers and the oligosaccharides from the seaweed itself, but you're also gonna get a more a balanced amount of the iodine, so a less concentrated amount. Which leads me to the second major point, which is that usually seaweed and iodine supplements contain way too much iodine for what is normal, especially if you're autoimmune Hashimoto's or if you have an autoimmune thyroid condition. So you actually only need about 150 micrograms of iodine at the top range for the production of thyroid hormone. And that's the basic reason that most people take iodine, especially for thyroid issues, is because like selenium, it's necessary for the production and secretion of thyroid hormone. So without iodine, your thyroid might not produce enough thyroid hormone, and this can be a major cause of things like goiter. So you really only need 150 micrograms for the production of thyroid hormone and for cellular uses. But from what I've seen, the recommended dose in most iodine supplements is anywhere from two to three times, if not more, than that recommended dose of 150 micrograms. So a lot of the times people taking a supplemental iodine, they're actually taking way too much of it and this can cause adverse issues. It can even interfere with good thyroid function, having sort of the opposite effect that you'd want it to have. And also seaweeds, a lot of seaweeds have 
a high amount of iodine also, so it's very easy to overeat the kelp or the various seaweeds and get too much iodine. So I recommend not going a supplemental route because you don't really know if it's radioactive or not. You could guess that it is maybe, and it's usually in such a high concentration and it's hard to get just a quarter or half of a drop from a little dropper of iodine. So it's very easy to overdose. And also with seaweeds, again, they usually just have more negative side effects than they do beneficial side effects. If you are gonna go the route of seaweed, you can just, again, soak like a little stick or sheet of kombu in a bone broth or something and get it from that. Otherwise, I would recommend that you get your iodine from shellfish. So from things like scallops and shrimp and oysters and squid or octopus, and good, clean, wild-caught shellfish if you can, because it's not only going to have the necessary iodine in more trace amounts and safer amounts, but you're also gonna get in selenium, copper, zinc, and a lot of other important micronutrients or minerals that people tend to also be deficient in when they're hypothyroid. So usually the big deficiencies, minerally speaking, in people with hypothyroid is not just iodine, but also selenium, copper, and zinc, and you're gonna find those most abundantly in your shellfish, you're not gonna get those so much in your seaweeds and you're obviously not gonna get it through iodine supplementation. So to summarize everything I just said, I wouldn't recommend taking a supplemental form. I would recommend getting it from shellfish, high quality shellfish, because you're gonna get those added minerals and you're gonna get it in a safer amount. You're probably gonna wanna eat shellfish like once or twice a week minimum, you know, a serving or two. Uh, once or twice a week. And again, the top range of iodine that you're gonna wanna consume is about 150 micrograms. Now, the other thing I just wanna touch on is that you brought up an autoimmune-related thyroid issue. So usually, the reason that people have thyroid issues, one of the major causes, as I've touched on in many videos, is estrogen. The high amounts of estrogen today, I think, are one of the number one causes for the widespread epidemic of hypothyroidism, in America at least, there's so much estrogen in our environment. It's in our food, it's in our water, it's in personal care products, it's in household cleaning products, it's even in our clothes, in our household, in of itself. I mean, the stuff's just everywhere and it's a major suppressor to good thyroid function. Estrogen not only blocks the secretion of thyroid from the thyroid gland, but it also opposes it on a cellular level. So it's definitely a major cause of thyroid issues and is especially a major contributing factor, if not the number one contributing factor, to autoimmune-driven thyroid conditions. So as I've mentioned before, estrogen can actually activate retroviruses in the body, which can overstimulate the immune system. Estrogen can stimulate cortisol and suppress immune function by interfering with the secretion of various immune cells and also atrophying the thymus gland. So estrogen is a major suppressor to the immune system and is very catabolistic, which can cause autoimmune conditions. But in addition to the high estrogen, it's usually gut issues actually that cause most autoimmune conditions. So although hypothyroidism can cause digestive issues, it can slow the rate of motility, the secretion of digestive enzymes and fluids, digestive issues can also cause hypothyroidism, especially autoimmune conditions. When your digestive system is weak, if you have low stomach acid or something along those lines, then your body is less capable of breaking down food. This can cause food to ferment in the gut. This can cause the overgrowth and proliferation of endotoxins or bacterial pathogens, especially in the small intestines. And those things put off serotonin and nitric oxide, which can actually interfere with thyroid function and suppress the immune system, causing most symptoms of autoimmunity. So other than just trying to get an iodine, I would definitely take a look at estrogen levels and reduce those. So looking into herbs like nettle, which has an anti-aromatase or anti-estrogen effect, and herbs like Chinese bitters and milk thistle, which also have anti-estrogen effects would help. But we also have videos on the YouTube channel that talk about how to lower estrogen. We also talk about how to lower estrogen systemically in pretty much all of our online courses. But in addition to lowering the estrogen, also keep in mind that most autoimmune conditions are driven by gut issues. So studies like this basically point out how all autoimmune conditions can be traced back to improper or abnormal gut function. So basically gut dysbiosis, usually an overgrowth of bacterial pathogens in the small intestines, which can actually trigger autoimmune issues, 
When the small intestine is overgrown with bacteria, this can trigger the release of serotonin and nitric oxide, which can cause a stress in the body that suppresses immune function and can lead to pretty much every symptom of autoimmunity that you could think of. So getting a handle on your digestive health is going to be essential for not just correcting thyroid issues, but especially getting a handle on autoimmune conditions. So in addition to getting adequate iodine and other minerals through shellfish, lowering estrogen, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your digestive system is working optimally. So I'd highly recommend looking into our online course, Perfect Digestion, which is one of the most comprehensive, if not the most comprehensive course on digestive health that's on the internet. I spent an entire month making that course. There's like eight hours of material, various PDFs. It's a really comprehensive course. And if you take it and apply everything, you will hands down see massive improvements in your digestive health, which will not only improve thyroid health, but it could greatly improve the health and functioning of your immune system and ultimately your overall health. All right, so taking a look at a second question, this question reads, what are the best herbs and diet for improving overall lung health and helping with shortness of breath? So not many people realize this, but your lungs are directly connected to the health and the functioning of your intestines. So according to TCM, the lungs and intestines are responsible for the production of your wee chi or your chi, and this makes sense because your lungs takes in oxygen, which is the bottleneck of oxidative metabolism, and your intestines take in all the various nutrients to be ultimately metabolized and combined, turned into ATP. So I have this theory that TCM's idea of chi energy is just their term for ATP, and I think that this makes sense physiologically speaking. So most lung issues, what I'm getting at, are actually related to digestive issues. In fact, if you have chest pains of any sorts, shortness of breath, any troubles with breathing, asthma, a lot of these things are actually just symptoms of inflammation and irritation in the intestines. So more than just focusing on the lungs and of themselves, which you can do through the use of herbs like astragalus, which is a premier lung tonic that improves immunity and the development or production of wee chi, I would also take a look at optimizing your intestines. As we were just talking about, the whole immune system is directly related to the health and integrity of the intestines. So I think as Plato said, all health and disease begins within the gut. The intestines are the basic place that you acquire your nutrition to make energy, to feel every cellular function in your body. And it's a major source of immunity. So your gut is lined with trillions of cells of bacteria that can either trigger an inflammatory or immune response or protect your body from inflammatory pathogens. So optimizing the intestines is going to be huge. I find that more than any other area of health, the digestive system is the most sensitive to psychosomatic factors, meaning that your mind and emotions affect your digestive system so strongly, which causes a cascade effects throughout your entire body. So this is just an observation, but I find that most of the time, lung issues, shortness of breath, is directly related to like over contraction of the colon. So this could be, again, directly related to just personality traits. If you're really stressed or tense emotionally, if you, you know, don't know how to just lighten up, take things non-seriously, if you're a very serious person, these things will all affect the health of your digestive system. Otherwise, the basic thing I'm gonna recommend is that you, again, also optimize digestive health. I would definitely recommend the Perfect Digestion course. There's actually a lot of material that's related to the psychosomatic factors related to digestive health. So it's not just diet, nutrition, herbs and supplements. It talks a lot about mental and emotional stress. I think it makes that course very valuable and unique because otherwise my basic piece of advice would be pretty general. It'd be just to lighten up. Easier said than done, of course, but ultimately it's stress that shuts down the digestive system by stimulating the sympathetic nervous system. And again, I, this is just an observation from over 10 years of clinical practice. So working with people one-on-one -on -one is that just the really serious people, the people that are so tense, they take life dead seriously. You know, nothing is just light and playful. These people I find have the most digestive issues and are particularly constipated. And that constipation will definitely interfere with proper breathing and it can cause shortness of breath amongst other issues. So my tips are herbally speaking, look into the supplementation of astragalus, for improving lung health and optimizing the wee chi and immune function. In regards to constipation, serotonin is generally responsible for peristalsis, so the release and contraction of the colon. So you need a little bit of serotonin. This is why taking fermented foods tends to relieve constipation because fermented foods have a lot of serotonin in them. 
But remember, as I talk about in various videos, too much serotonin will start to have an adverse effect and it can lead to inflammation because serotonin can trigger the secretion of cortisol, which you do not want over the long term. So you don't really want to stimulate uh, the peristalsis and the release of the bowels through uh, increasing serotonin necessarily, but you could on the short term, you know, take herbs like cascara that actually act as a natural laxative. You could blend fresh aloe into a smoothie, but you're ultimately going to want to get a handle on the root cause because if you have to rely on those things too long, they could create a new issue. You know, you could look into the use of Chinese bitters to generally increase the secretion of hydrochloric acid and help stimulate bowel movements. But these things are all anecdotal. You're going to want to get to the root cause, which is, in my experience, always stress. Digestive issues are usually always related to stress, unless of course you had a night where you stayed up too late and you ate something that you probably shouldn't have. But usually chronic digestive issues are related to chronic emotional and mental stressors. So again, you're just gonna wanna figure those things out. My best piece of advice would be to grab the Perfect Digestion course. It is a wealth of knowledge. We get so many positive testimonials from that course in regards to expanding one's awareness around the health of the digestive system and what you need to do and the various things that negatively and positively affect digestive health. But as I say in pretty much all these videos, the perfect diet for perfect digestion is just one that eliminates the very difficult to digest foods and focuses on more easy to digest foods. And again, that online course will talk all about the various foods that you should focus on eating, like a foundational diet, and the ones to pretty much just avoid as much as possible. And then there's various phases in the course that will kind of walk you through you know, different stages so that way once your digestive system gets more optimal, your diet's not so limited, but you still have a foundational diet where 80% of the time, you know, you're eating in a way that's causing no digestive stress, it's not taxing or stressing the digestive system, so that way you're not running into these issues where your intestines are inflamed and it's affecting the rest of your physiology negatively. So that course will talk about all of the specifics in regards to what foods to consume, what foods to avoid, but it goes into the various lifestyle factors and gives you tons of mental and emotional exercises that eliminate a lot of the psychological stressors that tend to cause most digestive issues amongst many, many other tips and tons of information. So I would just highly recommend grabbing that course if you haven't yet already. It's the best resource we have in terms of digestive health. It's such a broad topic, so I couldn't tell you everything in this single video. It took multiple videos to explain that subject, so that's why we made it. But other than that, if you want to, we have other videos here on the YouTube channel that do talk about digestive health. You know, you can get a lot of information from those videos in of themselves. But you know, if you're having any difficulties, that's going to be the resource. It'll just put everything step by step in one place. You can understand what to do. But at the end of the day, you still have to implement everything and try it out. And keep in mind that it takes time for the body to heal and recalibrate, especially if your body's been in a chronic state of stress for many years or many months even. And also remember, as mentioned in the first part of this video, hypothyroidism is a major reason that people tend to have a slow digestion or not as strong of a digestion as they used to. And one of the major things I see that women do in particularly is that they don't eat enough calories. They're so afraid of calories. And this is the number one way to get hypothyroidism through diet alone. So you could be perfectly healthy otherwise, but if you're not consuming enough calories, your thyroid will downregulate. And this will downregulate your digestive system immediately. So one simple tip I have, if you want to see your digestive system start to turn back on, if you want to turn back up that digestive furnace, you've got to give it something to work for. So eat more calories, just make sure they're nutrient dense from easy to digest foods. So hopefully all of that answered your question. All right, guys, that brings this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday to a close. Remember, if you're interested in winning some free herbs and mushrooms, or if you want your questions answered, all you have to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up, and just drop your comments and questions in the comment section below. Also keep in mind that we have a blog, an online tonic herb shop, and an online wellness academy, all which are full of additional information and helpful resources, which you can find in the description box below.